Rio was uh, 2016 was the most I've ever grown. I, I think I grew more in that year than all my years combined. Wow. Um, I was in, so grateful for the sponsors that I was able to secure. Um, GoFundMe was the way I was. I was I was going to UW training. I was coming back all the way to Renton, working at Dick Sporting Goods in the Landing, 20 hours a week, um, and. I was just like trying to figure out how I was going to make it happen in the beginning of the fall. Uh, getting over an injury as well, moving back away from the training center, just trying to be close to family and friends and this really, you know, this time that was coming up and mentally you're just, you know, you just get nervous because it's like this is a this is a year defining, you know, life moment right here, you know, and U.S. takes top three that day, no excuses. Mm-hmm. And um, that was weighing on me seeing if I did the best decision coming back and training with my coach from my last year. I knew he was a great coach and I wanted to work with him, but going back to where it started, it made sense destiny-wise. I was kind of just opening my heart and mind up to that. Um, trying to work with a sponsor outside of it. I was trying to get uh, some Nike, Adidas, or Brooks sponsorship. I had a very rough road when I went with Brooks. It was, uh, it was I felt very othered while I was with them. And, Dealing with that in terms of training was another kind of mental thing that I was, I was struggling with. And Dr. Bob and a lot of my team was very supportive of it. But going to the Olympic trials, going through all the injuries, some of the doubt, some of the wonderful um, successes that I had, my life was in just like 4K high resolution that mm-hmm. year. And the moment I remember the most was going having a great first day having a great first eight nine events and then going into the last event and I was fourth and the guy ahead of me I had to beat by 13 seconds in the 1500 which is not an easy you know order I have a strong 1500 but you know that's kind of when the mental game comes in and the presence of mind and seeing it not as a defeating thing but something that you're going to love working towards Mm -hmm. and love just you know surmounting that obstacle so when I did do that, um, I vaulted myself from fourth place into second place. That I went out after that 1500 with such conviction that I was like, in my mind, I had just already set. I had the best just um, athletic growth point that I was like, if anyone is determining who is on this Olympic team, it is me. It is me right now. I'm not using any excuses, anything that I've been through, anything that was currently even working against me at that meet. I was like, this is me. This is when you take it. This is like Achilles and Troy when he's pointing at the beach. It's like immortality. Take it. It's yours. You know, go work for it. So that moment, it was amazing to me because I knew, you know, right then and there, I was on the Olympic team. I was looking at the clock. I looked at the Jumbotron. I was there. I was second a flood of just emotion and, and energy ran through me and I was just like I was just so just like blissfully grateful for everything that had happened to me everyone I had ever met everything that I had gone through everything that was supportive um, in that moment and you and it's funny because you remember all the bad stuff all the good stuff and you love it just the same that's awesome and man. so that was making the team but that was it right there so then the next couple of weeks uh, Number one, don't get on antibiotics before you're about to go compete in major competition. <laughs> Stay in that, you kind of mentioned it in some of our um, notes here, that uh, youthful wonderment, mm-hmm. and that excitement. I wish I had stayed in that. I wish I had plugged in and, and stayed in that blissful moment. Um, I knew I had to get back to business and train even more because I had other sponsors and other influences that weren't necessarily important to me at the time. Those weren't, those weren't around me when I was four years old and dreaming of this and wanting to be like exactly, my dad, yeah. right? So if anything for these athletes, stay in that beautiful, that space of creativity creativity, and just like wanting to move and accomplish lifelong things. Don't worry about the, the finite and the, the, the stuff that's immeasurable right there. It's just, it's not, it's a distraction, right? Mm-hmm. So I got into the games and, um, you know, I was with Dr. Bob with the team. And uh, fortunately I had strained my groin just a couple weeks after trials and this was like you know four or six weeks before the event so in my mind I had already come to the conclusion I was like well you know you had a big distraction you kind of let this get to you um but also my other half that's knows that knows how to battle was like guess what you're gonna jog 
you're going to stay in relative condition. You can't do any event stuff till you get to the games, but when you get to the games, you're going to ball out because mm-hmm. you've been given these athletic talents and you need to showcase like, yeah, you might not be able to practice before them, but boy, when it matters, you're going to perform like an athlete. And I think a lot of athletes definitely want to get there. I've already been there, checked in mentally, like when it comes to the competition, I'm going to ball out no matter what. And so getting to the games, walking into the opening ceremony, being behind Michael Phelps, seeing all these compatriots, seeing like, you know, KD meeting him, seeing like Kyrie Irving, all these basketball players. And I'm like thinking, I'm like, man, this is incredible. But it's like, wait, I'm number two. I'm, I'm the second best, technically I'm the second best athlete America's sending. If you qualify the decathlon for, you know, athletic prowess and how it measures up, I'm like, I'm just like these guys. Yeah. It's, inc- it's just like, it's humbling. And there wasn't an ego amongst all these people, all these professionals there, because they they looked you in the eyes and they recognized someone who was willing to do whatever it took, someone who had the same grind, Mm -hmm. and someone who had those deep valleys that they got out of, someone who has been through a lot of stuff, but they always said, one more, one more, next thing. And so I was just like in a a room full of peers, and it just felt felt right, Mm -hmm. you know? And Rio being walking out in the stadium, I just got back into that sense of wonderment. I was like, this is, I'm walking in a dream right now. I was so eternally grateful. I was like, I, I didn't realize how crazy it was me saying at four years old, I'm gonna be an Olympian, you know, until I had to go through everything to get there, you know? Yeah. So being there at the games, it was just, it was amazing. It was just awe inspiring. And I fought and I fought through the whole thing and it was an amazing competition. I, I was super proud of what I did, what I had to come through to get there and how I performed. I loved every second of it and got to see other sports done, got to see just the level of competition. I was like, wow, I was competing against arguably the best of all time, you know? So that was, yeah, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. I hope I, hope I can do it again and, and come back and, and really enjoy that experience again because it, oh, yeah. it was defining for sure.